I like my truth uncensored. My whole network viral. Twelve and a half get you a quarterback. It's going to be interesting year in the hip-hop world in the next year and a half. And definitely. Indeed, when speaking of, of rappers and, and entertainers involving legal, real legal situations, Kodak Black, man, now, we've been talking about Kodak Black the last couple of weeks, and it seems as though we've been talking about him for everything, whether he's saying something or he's in legal trouble, he's getting hit by the feds. I mean, it, it never ends. Well, according to TMZ today, um, they come out and say that legal documents reveal that Kodak Black's fingerprints were discovered in a Porsche panorama he allegedly rented now the documents also show that kodak black dropped three thousand five hundred eighteen dollars and 71 cents for a mini draco pistol sig mxk nine millimeter pistol and the sig p 238 380 pistol the prosecutors alleged that kodak purchased three weapons and over 100 rounds of ammo back in february from louis police distributors which is the same place where kodak allegedly bought guns after filing paperwork with false information ordered to obtain a firearm now the purchase was reportedly set up soon after kodak turned in the gun application this past january now during the police investigation of the crime scene in pomano beach in march police found the porsche abandoned and severely damaged about 14 miles from the crime scene then they obtained the vehicle's gps data and pinpointed the car in golden acres at the time of the shooting mm. kodak's criminal criminal attorney Bradford cohen says the prosecutors admitted that the gun found at the scene of the crime had not been used he also said that witnesses from the site of the shooting told him that kodak that they hadn't seen the rapper at the scene of the shooting these allegations against kodak marked second recent legal trouble since tied he was arrested before rolling loud set we all know on may 11th on top of all the other shit, on top of all the other shit. Yeah, looked like they got him. Goodness gracious, oh God, what do you think about this? Now, obviously, this was a shooting that happened down in Florida. They didn't know what happened. They found the the, the car. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, again, like you said, the other stuff and the other stuff, all the stuff being very serious, the sexual assault thing mm -hmm. he has going on. You know, this case now, they're saying there's prints all over the place. They matched the GPS, the car, the Porsche. Jesus all the records Christ. is there, man. It's just like paper trail. You know what I mean? So it's just like a, a downward spiral for the young gentleman. And, and it was crazy because, you know, I had my title on the other day. It, it popped up on a um, Kodak song. I forget the name of the song. Um, man, man, what's the name of that song? It come to me in a minute. And I was listening to it. It was pretty dope. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It was pretty decent. And it's just sad to see, you know, this young man, you know, that has a lot of potential, I have to admit go to a downward spiral right it looks like probably now with the um him trying to get into canada with the guns uh the sexual assault case and now this case that he's going to be spending you know in his you know immediate future behind bars it just looks like that now maybe he may work something out where he may be able to finagle where he gets some type of probation which i doubt kodak black is going to have to probably sit for a while because of bad decisions continuously making bad decisions and worse decisions and now it's going to cost him a lot of money and his freedom the silver lining and all of this because there is some even though it may seem like he's at rock bottom right now this kid is 21 years old yes i call him a kid i take a lot of flack for that but i'm not coming off of that and i mean let's say he does a dime he'll come out when he's 31 years old although he have missed a lot of time a lot of money and and missed out on a lot of opportunity at least he would have gotten the schooling that now he brought on himself and can move him forward mm -hmm. in life i often talk about him and be a young boy and a lot of these other young up-and-coming rappers i can guarantee you they have no proper guidance right, right i guarantee you their father figure wasn't properly there i don't know how their mothers were maybe working as hard as they could to provide maybe not being there i don't know but i know somewhere along the line somebody didn't wrap their arm around these young brothers and go yo this is how you move or this ain't how you move you got talented people you got rappers that or you got people on uh, above mm -hmm. in certain in these corporations that go and blood suck and look at certain talents and go and exploit them give them the jewels give them this but don't properly teach them how to be a man and deal with these blessings that they're receiving throw them in this age of social media and now they're being fucking ridiculed and they're being they're looked at and judged on it i mean it's a recipe do you, for disaster, do you think though because you know what you're saying you know him a kid and whatnot and him young boys 19 he's 21 is the end responsibility on kodak black shoulder for continuously you absolutely know, doing, doing, doing the fullest thing and that's why i'm cool and i'm not I'm, i don't i don't condone jail time on anybody but when you look at just over and over and over again a lesson needs to be learned because you're either going to die or you're going to do life in there 
And right now, the silver lining in this is at least you're not sitting in a situation where you could potentially lose your entire life behind bars. Hopefully you get away with a situation where if you do have to do some time, you sit down and you can get out. Let's say you had to do 10 years, you're 21, 22 years old. You get out at 32. Life goes on at 32 years old. Mm -hmm. You still have plenty of life to be able to live, to be able to tell. You could still make money. You could still flourish out here in, in a society where independent and independent money making is like no other. It's like a fucking a, a desert fire out there in the West yeah. making money. So it's not over for somebody like him, especially somebody that is respected in the game out here amongst his peers. Somebody that's looked at to where if he came out, he could potentially still have a music career. Unlike some other rappers that we talk about in jail and situations right now, the world wouldn't end for him. Mm -hmm. Maybe he needs this in order to sit down because you wouldn't want the worst to happen. Like I said, him dying or him in a potential situation where he doesn't have an opportunity to get out and have a second chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, man, you know, even though we had a lot of harsh, not even harsh, you know, just, you know, always fairing down the middle, you know, commentary and criticism of some of Kodak Black's behaviors, we ultimately want the best. He's yeah. a young black entrepreneur that came out of a, um, you know, substandard, substandard condition to make himself a millionaire. I think that's a beautiful story, but I just think a lot of these guys just have to, you know, because you're in a pri privileged position where you got millions of dollars coming in. You got to make better decisions because you you're in a position now where you can set, you know, generations up. You know what I mean? Your kids, your kids, 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 and really build some real wealth. But if you want to just take that and pay into the prison system, paying for the lawyers, paying for books, you know, paying for um, phone calls, you could do that as well. And the, the prison would be happy to make more money off another black millionaire. They're making it off of poor people all the time. So it's just like smarter decisions. Hopefully, you know, these guys can get, you know, some people in their crew. That's why you got to shout out people like Eminem. He had Cortez Bryan all the time, childhood friend, which I think is turned into his manager. A lot of guys. You know what I mean? Got people along their walk, maybe not right away, that said, okay, look, man, I'm going to put you under my wing. You know what I mean? I'm going to show you how to do this and this and this like this. So, you know, um, hopefully Kodak can get somebody like that. I think he had a situation with Master P. Master P tried to kind of put him under his wing, and that kind of went sour. We talked about that about a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. So, what's the best for Kodak, man? But it's looking bad for him right now. Yeah, I mean, lessons have to be learned, man. You get up, hit rock bottom, you work your way out. And you have time to, you know what I mean, rejuvenate yourself, man. So all is what it is, man, the civil linings and everything. Salute to Kodak Black and all your situations you may be going through. And that is what it is. Like Oga said, oh God, I wanted to talk about real quick, yes, sir. just to transition real quick to my man, DJ Khaled. Now, we talked about him last week. Um, the album coming out, Father of Assad. The shit's dope. I've had a proper time to really listen to it. I love it. I think it's a great body of work. I think it's as advertised like everyone was talking about. I think it's his best body of work because I was critical of some of his older body of works. I didn't understand what was going on. And not to say that he's not great because he gets not, nothing but respect out here. It's just something that I wasn't connecting with. I fuck with Khaled. Excuse me. I fuck with Khaled and I like this, man. Well, Punch, if you don't know who Punch is, TDE, mm -hmm. president out there on the West Coast with Kendrick Schoolboy Q and then brothers out there. This is what he said on Twitter in regards to one of Khaled's album oh, songs. Excuse me. I told Khaled that the hip hop purist is upset at him for sampling outcast he said when you got outcast blessing that's the purest then he said we the purest as you guys could see there and then he started laughing now if you don't know Oga, because i don't know if you really listened to the album yet there was a song on there with scissor real dope song and it mm -hmm. um the sample sorry miss jackson right samples dope beats dope everything about it is hot but we see nowadays that a lot of your your purists they have an issue okay i got that they got mm -hmm. an issue with people sampling their music what do you think right. about that i don't have a problem with it man like we talked about it briefly in the pre-production i think you know like kyle said as long as you have their blessing you know what i mean to do it it just didn't pop out one day and you heard it you got there and they said oh yeah go ahead man you know because like you said man somebody's just being inspired you know by something you did should be a good thing but everybody sees things differently and some fans think that you shouldn't alter or add on to anything that's a classic you know like the song is that was sampled you know what i mean so i can understand that side of it but ultimately it's going to come down who to who owns the rights to that song they can do whatever the hell they want with that but i think that you know i would like to hear you know sometime you know maybe if i read you know, more of the article what the people who have a gripe about it what's their issue really with the, the fact that they're sampling in music i don't get it well you see like somebody for example like a marvin gay and his estate um pharrell 
and I forgot who Pharrell and um, Robin Thicke, they did that song mm-hmm. and they sampled some of their the, the B section or some of that. They got sued for millions and had to pay up. Mm-hmm. But because he doesn't play with his music, but it, as much as I love Marvin Gaye's legacy and everything, I would never want to disrespect Marvin Gaye's legacy or anything like that. How can you t- to shortcome somebody's creativity? They heard something, a little piece of something, and it inspired them to make something great mm-hmm. as they're paying homage. Why not work out something to where at least homage is paid in in Tuned into the greatest Motherfucker, you ain't never lie If them people watching us like YouTube Then tell them motherfuckers like and subscribe If the blunt's stale, I still click a bell